so before we get into our next song of praise we are going to be starting a new series today and that series is conquering our jerichos and many of us all of us who belong to christ have jerichos but in that having those jerichos god has also given the victory yes he has so we consider what we are going through we, we consider what's what's happening and we identify them properly as jerichos jerichos are many times overwhelming jerichos are greatly fortified but you know what the scripture tells us that jericho fears the people of god mm. so we are not to be in fear of jericho mm -hmm. or our jerichos but we obey the commands of god knowing that jerichos fear us yeah so Amen. we we give ourselves to the strategies of God in overcoming or conquering our Jerichos. And most times, many times, I would say all the time, God's strategies are totally different from our strategies. So it takes us to trust God. It takes us to have faith in him. And also, we'll see the scripture says, sometimes make ourselves vulnerable so that his strategy can be the one that is used and not our strategy. Because, you know, when we take things and matters into our own hands or we approach Jericho's according to our own finite thinking, we typically mess it up. Yeah. But God, he never messes up. He just wants us to trust yeah. him. He wants yeah. us to depend upon him. He wants us to be in total submission to him. And you know what? Jericho will tend to cause us to sway from yeah. trusting God. Will tend to cause us to not have total faith and dependence upon him. And that's what Jericho does. But again, mm -hmm. God says that Jericho fears us. Yes, yes. Amen. And we are not to fear Jericho. All right, that's good, Pastor. So we praise him and we thank him because he is always one to encourage us. Because we need encouragement. Amen. We need it. Yes, we do. And he knows exactly what we need. So let's continue to praise him mm -hmm. as we prepare our hearts to hear from him. Amen. Praise his name. Praise him with song. Lift up your voice. If you know it, sing along Amen. so that he can hear from heaven. Amen. I'll go to the Darkness, my God, that is who you are. 
light in the darkness. He's our God, and we praise his name. Let's, let's pray as we prepare to hear from him as he speaks to encouraging us. Father, we thank you so much. Oh, we're glad to be yours, God. Thank you for comforting us, and you comfort us with your word. Oh, your word is sure. It's genuine. It's full of veracity, oh God. Your promises never fail because they are totally dependent upon the one who makes the promise. And you are our promise keeper. God, as we walk through the scriptures in the book of Joshua, we ask, Lord, that you would help us because we need encouragement. We are dealing with Jericho's, oh God, with Jericho's feeble. Help us to recognize how feeble Jericho is. Help us, Lord, to be strong and courageous in you because we know that the victory is, is yours. The battle is yours. The victory is yours. And we are the benefactors of you being our great and mighty warrior. Thank you so much, God. I confess my sins and ask, Lord, that you would forgive me and cleanse me so that your word is not hindered in me or by me, so that your people are blessed and edified by you and you alone. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. So, Israel has finally gotten through the wilderness, wilderness dwell, uh, dwellings. And they are arriving in and have arrived into the promised land. It took them a little while to get there. They had to deal with being disobedient. They had to deal with doubting God. They had to deal with not trusting God. They had to deal with disobeying God. As a matter of fact, they had to deal with being stiff naked. God said that my people are stiff necked people. And because they were stiff necked, it took them a little while again to get to the promised land. As a matter of fact, those who were in the previous generation did not experience going into God's promised land. And the reason why they didn't experience it, of course, was because they all died. And they died before the promised land was experienced or realized because of their disobedience. And so no, now God is taking the next generation into the promised land. And it's something that's going to be very significant for us to note. And that is that the circumstances in the promised land that kept them from going in when God commanded them originally had not changed. The promised land still had those things that caused the children of Israel to rebel against God or to disobey God by not going in, not trusting him. But those same situations and circumstances or people or Jerichos that were in the promised land then are still in the promised land now. And so we have to be mindful of the fact that God does not always change the circumstances to fit our comfort zone. God is looking for obedience. He's looking for courage. He's looking for faithfulness. He's looking for ones who trust him in light of or in spite of the circumstances. 
And so we're going to see now as Joshua is taking over or has taken over for Moses, Moses has died. Joshua now is the leader and he has been commanded by God to take the people into the promised land. And many of us, I would say all of us, have to deal with Jericho's or the enemy of God or those which cause us discomfort, cause us pain, can even cause us to fear. Whatever your Jericho is, whatever you are actually dealing with, Jericho can be described as many different variations of life experiences. Jericho is not just regulated to a fortified city, although it is fortified. Your Jericho may be a marriage gone haywire. Your Jericho may be health situations that are causing you much distress. Your Jericho may be a financial situation that is dire and depressing. Your Jericho may be dealing with someone who is very difficult to deal with. Your Jericho may be overcoming obstacles in your ministry. Your Jericho may be you fill in the blank because Jericho exists and Jericho is real, but God expects Jericho to be conquered because God says to go in and conquer Jericho. So in order to do that, we must give ourselves to God's ways, God's methods, God's strategy, because our strategy does not work. Our strategies lead to frustration. Our strategies lead to a lack of accomplishment. Uh Our strategies are just that, our strategies. So we look at Joshua chapter 6, where we will just touch on the first three verses as we are in part one of our series, Conquering Our Jericho read the verses for you, verses 1 through 3 of chapter 6 of the book of Joshua. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king, and the mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. Now God tells Joshua about Jericho. It tells us here in the text that Jericho was securely shut up or Jericho was a fortified city and it had high walls. So as the children of Israel went into the promised land, the first thing that they were required to do was to address Jericho. Now, addressing Jericho meant that they had to give themselves to obeying God to accomplish God's goal of him being glorified. 
but you know they are in the promised land. See, they've already crossed over the Jordan. So that tells you and I, when God delivers us, and just because he delivers us, does not mean that the road is going to be smooth on this side of heaven. It does not mean that there won't be any Jerichos, there won't be any problems, there won't be any things that we have to conquer. They're in the promised land, but they still have to fight. They have to fight in order for God to be glorified because God is totally sovereign and he has given them the promised land. But God also requires you and I or the children of Israel to be responsible. Meaning that although the land had been given, God said you must go in and possess it. So for you and I, in order for us to possess what God has given to us, he says that we cannot just sit down and be idle, but we must be offensive minded. Although God has already won the victory, accomplished the, the, the taking of the land, he says that now you must possess it. So Jericho is a fortified city. Now, this situation has not changed from the earlier generation or the generation that was disobedient to God, the generation that did not obey God, the generation of the children of Israel who were afraid to do what God asked them or commanded them to do. Now, in Deuteronomy chapter 1, it tells us this very thing. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 28, Israel refused to enter into the land. They said, God, we ain't going to do it. God, we we aren't going to go because we we scared. God, there's some folks in that land, there's some places in that land that we just don't want to deal with, although you are the mighty God. Although you are the great king sovereign, although you are the one who is in control of everything, we just ain't going to do it because we scared. Verse 28 says in Deuteronomy chapter 1, where can we go up? The children of Israel said, our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying the people are greater and taller than we. The cities are great and fortified up to heaven. Moreover, we have seen the sons of Anakim there in the land. He said, they said, look, the spies went into the land and they came back with these reports saying that, oh, it's a land that's got some big folk in it. It's some land that has some fortified cities in it. It's some land that has some great walls in it. And we are scared to go. We're going to listen to the ones who went into the land to spy it for us. We're going to listen to them. Because we are not courageous enough to listen to God. In verse 29 it says, Then I said to you, do not be terrified or afraid of them. God tells them, don't be terrified. Don't be afraid of them. Don't be discouraged. Now, these same folk, that were in the land then. These same fortified cities that were in the land then are in the land right now. Mm -hmm. And so God says the situations have not changed. What must change is your attitude towards me. What must change is your response to me. What must change is that you must give yourself to me in total obedience, be courageous, don't be discouraged, because it's still some big folk giant in the land, and there's still some fortified cities in the land. But you know, God said that I have a witness and I have a track record. I have been doing some things in your life. I have been doing some things 
through you. I have been doing some things for you that these people in Jericho mm -hmm. have witnessed. Yeah. And because they have witnessed that, they have now, they have an attitude that is one that is going to be to your your benefit. Now we gotta we gotta look at Rahab for a second. Mm -hmm. All right. We gotta understand who Rahab is. Rahab was God calls a prostitute that was used by him to minister to the children of Israel as they went into the land. So that tells us, first, of, first and foremost, that anyone who gives himself to God, no matter what your profession is, no matter what your background is, no matter what your lifestyle is, if you give yourself to God in faith so he can change those adverse lifestyles that you may be living, he's going to honor that. And he's going to use you. So he uses Rahab, and he uses Rahab to protect those two who went into the land. Now they're two, not twelve. He two went into the land to spy out the land and Rahab protected them. But while she was protecting them, she told them something about God's track record. So the heathen are able to see God's track record. That means that you and I who belong to God must stand on God's track record. Rahab says to the men, she says, I know that the Lord has given you the land in verse 9 of chapter 2 of Joshua. That the terror of you has fallen on us. We scared. And that all the inhabitants of the land are faint hearted because of you. Rahab tells them, y'all scared of us. But we scared of you. You scared of us. But you have the almighty God on your side. You have the God of heaven who controls everything. You have the God of heaven who is sovereign in every situation and circumstance on your side. And you scared of us? We terrified of you. Rahab tells them. She says, she tells them why we terrified of you in verse 10. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. All right, all right. And, and, and for you, when you came out of Egypt, we know you were a uh, captive in Egypt. We know that you were servants in Egypt, slaves in Egypt. But the Lord, with a strong and mighty hand, brought you out. And when he brought you out, he did something that was beyond nature. Because he controls nature. God dried up, it said, the Red Sea. And he did that for you. Okay. Don't you know that God will, he, he, he'll, he'll, he'll dry some water up for you because he loves you, because you're his. God will move heaven and earth for you because you're his. She goes on and reminds them. And what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of the Jordan, Sion and God and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. Yeah. Oh, God has been doing some things in your life. God has turned some things around in your life. God has made some big and mighty accomplishments in your life. And you scared of Jericho? You dealing with the situations and circumstances of Jericho, we scared of y'all. So we, I just want you, I, Rahab said, I just want y'all to know, don't be scared of us. We scared of you. And so as she continued to minister to them, to remind them of who God is and what God has done, sometimes, we ought to be reminding ourselves. Okay. Don't let somebody who don't know the Lord All right. remind you of what your God can do. Okay. Back in chapter 6, verse 1, we see that God tells them that although the city is fortified, it's only fortified 
and secure because they fear you. None went out and came in because they say the children of Israel out there. And you know what? We afraid of their God. So God's on your side. Amen. God's on your side. Now, God also shares with us that he owns Jericho. Do you know that which you are going through, that which you are dealing with, whatever your Jericho is, Listen clearly. God owns Jericho. In verse 2, it says here, And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. The only way you can give something to somebody is if you have it in your possession or if you own it. God here says that I own Jericho. That thing that you're dealing with, that Jericho that's causing you much pain, that Jericho that's causing you much fear, God says that he owns it. I have given Jericho into your hands. So the battle's already won. You just got to be faithful and trust God and go in and, 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 and possess it. See, I have given Jericho into your hand, and not only Jericho, I've given all the leadership of Jericho into your hand, says the king and all the mighty men of war. So not only the city of Jericho, all the stuff, all the property. But he says all the leadership and all those who would be fighting against you because they are the mighty men of valor. But in the hands of God, if they are the enemy of God, they are not mighty men. They are men who will be defeated by God's people because God told Joshua and the children of Israel to go in because I want you to conquer or take possession because I have divine ownership over Jericho. Yeah. So now, whatever I am dealing with, the first thing that I want to acknowledge is that God is sovereign in this. God controls this. God is the one who is seated on the throne of power. And my Jericho will fall or be conquered uh -huh. as I give myself to God. Yeah. Not to myself. Not to my strategy. And that leads us to God's strategy. So we're going to see in verse 3 the beginning of the description of God's strategy. And when God gives his strategy, it's going to require something of his children. It says in verse 3, Now you shall march around the city, all you men of war, circling the city one time. It says further, you shall do this six, six days, once each day for six days. All right, now, God's strategy starts to be described. Okay, now, this strategy that God is giving to me or giving to the children of Israel just don't seem smart. And it don't seem smart because, first of all, God, remember they got high walls. Remember, God, the city is fortified. Now, you want me to use your strategy to walk around the walls of the city 
I already told you, God, the walls are high. Uh -huh. so, so, God, what that means is they're going to be over my head uh -huh. and have the advantage over me uh -huh. because of how they are positioned. Yeah. And in that position of advantage over me, I don't think that's a smart move, God. Because I don't want to be vulnerable. God says we must allow ourselves to be vulnerable when we employ God's strategy. Now, it's very important to remember that God's strategy is a strategy that is not dependent upon my power. That's why I have to give myself to being vulnerable or seemingly powerless because when I walk around the wall with the enemy over my head, I know the enemy can throw stones on my head. I know the enemy can shoot arrows down on me. I know the enemy can pour hot oil on me. I know the enemy can do all of these things against me because of my vulnerable position. But God says, he's already told me, through Rahab, that these folks scared of you. Now, when they see you employing God's strategy, and God's strategy looks foolish, but don't let it look foolish to you. Well, when it looks foolish to the enemy, they're going to be even more scared. Because they're saying, these folks are unusual. Don't they know that if they walk around this wall unprotected, yeah. that we're going to throw rocks on them, we're going to throw hot oil on them. Yeah. We're going to shoot arrows on them. We're going to throw our spears on them. Don't they notice they must have something uh, that we just have no idea about. Uh, I'm even more scared of these folks now because you know what? They look crazy. Uh, and, 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 and you and I can attest to, we try to stay away from crazy folks. Uh, uh, uh. But anyway, we must allow ourselves to be vulnerable. But we also, it says, must trust God. Because he says, you shall march around the city, and this you shall do six days. Now, okay, God, my faith going to be tested. Because you know what, God? When I walk around the city the first time, and nothing happened to me. They don't throw oil on my head. Mm -hmm. They don't hit me with a javelin. Mm -hmm. They don't drop a big boulder on my head. Uh -huh. I don't think I'm going to take that chance again. Uh -huh. I don't think that I'm going to make myself vulnerable like that again. Uh -huh. I don't think that I want to put myself in that position again. But God says that if you are going to employ my strategy, if you are going to obey me, then you must have your faith tested. You must be given to a situation that's going to try your patience, that's going to test your faith, because that's what's required for one to please God. Now, do you want to please God? Dealing with this Jericho. Or am I going to do what seems more logical? Or which is more comfortable. But remember, these children of Israel, God says that y'all are peculiar people. You different folk. You don't do the things the same way the heathen do it. That's what makes you peculiar. Yeah, yeah. He tells us that we are peculiar people those in, in Christ Jesus, yeah. that we are special, that we don't do things the same way the heathen do. We don't address Jerichos the same way the heathen address Jerichos, because this is it. God wants the glory. Yes, he does. Yes. Not you get the glory, not the heathen get the glory. God wants the glory. So that's why we give ourselves to God's strategy because it's different yeah, yeah. from man's strategy. Because man will tell you, I did this, 
I did that. My power, my might. God says no. He receives the glory. Yes, he now, yes, he does. that's why the sacrifice of Jesus is foolishness to me. Because God's strategy, when it comes to saving you and me, was a strategy that no man would employ. Right. It's a strategy that only the heaven, God of heaven, would come up with. Right. The plan of salvation where God left heaven, right. draped himself in flesh, right. became a man, implemented and employed this strategy, which is foolishness to men, because if you're such a great God, why are you going to give yourself to being crucified? If you are such a great God, why are you going to be humiliated by your creatures? I don't believe you, God. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in none of this because it's foolishness to me. If you are in that number, then you are seriously mistaken. God says that his strategy is different from your strategy. His strategy is higher than your strategy. Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, came from heaven, draped himself in flesh, humiliated by his creatures, gave himself to his creatures to be abused, misused, talked about, spit on, beat down, Stabbed with a spear, nailed to a cross with nails, a crown of thorns put on his head, whipped down by the hands of the Romans at the behest of the Jews. God did that to save you from the penalty of your sin and the penalty of my sin. God's strategy is, 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 is much much greater so look if you're dealing with a Jericho and I know you are find out what God's strategy is before you start boohooing because Jericho is afraid of you because of your God Jericho will fall and be conquered because of your God and our great Savior, Jesus Christ, conquered sin and death by a wonderful strategy. Won't you join him today? Won't you give yourself to, to Jesus, our Christ? Won't you come today? God wants to save you. He has a great end beautiful strategy. He has a wonderful strategy. It may seem foolish, but it's designed in heaven. He said, follow my strategy. Because I want to save you. I can't save you. He says, won't you come? If you don't know Jesus Christ today as your Savior, and Lord, today is the day of salvation. Won't you come? He says, I want to work in you and through you to overcome your jealousy. Yes, the victory is here. Yes. And you might be asking yourself, what does it take for me to be saved today? I want to give myself to the strategy of God. What should I do? How can I be saved? What must I do to be saved? Do you want to be saved? Do you want to avoid eternal destruction? Do you want to be saved? If you do, if you want to be saved, just, just pray this prayer. Repeat it after me. And if you believe it with all your heart, God says that he will save you.
Father, I know that I am a sinner, and I know, God, that you sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for my sins. And I trust Jesus as my Savior. I want to have him as my Lord. I confess my sins, knowing, God, that there is nothing good in me or about me, because there is none good, no, not me. Only God is good, and your standard is most high. Thank you for saving me, God. And now that you've saved me, will you live in me and through me so that I can experience victory in dealing with these Jerichos? I praise your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, do I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and believed it in your heart, truly believe that the gospel of Christ is what you believe. He says that you are saved. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome home. We thank God for saving you. Praise his name. Keep exalting him. Give yourself to him and to him. Talk to you about submission. The victory is ours in Christ Jesus. We thank you so much for being with us today. We pray that the Lord has ministered to you so that you can now have a strategy that you can implement to attack and conquer Jericho. Today was just the first introduction of the strategy. We're going to go through the strategy so that we can see how God wants us to be dependent upon him in conquering the enemy. Praise God. Blessings to you.